Hey young man, Mr. Maldonado here. Alright, so we're going to continue talking about energy. Now we've already talked about energy with potential and kinetic energy, so now we're going to look at some other forms of energy and how they work with objects around us. So, we have something known as the law of conservation of energy. Now this is something that we've already talked about. We've talked about it with matter, which is the, what makes up everything. And now we're going to continue talking about it with energy. So, the law of conservation of energy is energy is never blank nor blank. So I want you to take a minute, uh, pause the video if you need to, try to think, figure out what's going to go into these two blanks. It is something we've talked about, so let's see if you can remember. And then once you think you know the answers, go ahead and continue playing the video. Alright, so this is what you should have here. Energy is never created nor destroyed. Alright, so once you have energy, you're, you can't just create new energy out of nowhere and it doesn't get destroyed and it's completely gone forever. Okay, energy just transfers or transforms from one type of energy to another. So for example, when we were looking at potential kinetic, we had our roller coaster and we saw that potential at the very top didn't just disappear, but as it went down, it changed completely into kinetic energy, and then it goes up, and it changes back into potential, and it keeps going back and forth. That's what energy does. All right, so we have something known um, as Mr. Chen's. This is a mnemonic device that I like to use with my students when we're talking about the different types of energy. We, we need to be able to remember all these types of energy. So I even color-coded it for you, because in class, we're going to be looking at some chain links made of colors, and you're going to have to figure out to what objects it goes to with the energy transformation. So, Mr. Chen's, we have our M for mechanical, our R for radiant, C for chemical, H for heat, E for electrical, N for nuclear, and S for sound. So let's start by looking at the very first one. So the first one we have here is going to be mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the energy where we have motion, okay? Things are moving. So here I have, I have some examples. I have a person right here that is running. I have a person here moving up and down doing his push-ups. But mechanical energy can also be with objects. Any object that is able to move has mechanical energy. So when a car is moving, it has mechanical energy, etc. Let's get the next one. All right, so here we have radiant energy. Now, for radiant energy, it's we can also say solar energy. Sorry, I, I accidentally put an A there, I apologize. Okay, solar energy, but I also like to use this for light energy. All right, so we have some examples here. We have radiant energy that comes from the sun, that's our solar energy, and we have light energy here in our light bulb, and fire also gives us light, so we also have light energy there. Then we have the C, this is chemical energy. So chemical energy is found in the bonds of atoms. So a few uh, weeks ago, or well, probably like a few months ago now, when we started talking about elements and compounds, we had seen how, for example, H2O would have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, and they're connected. So these bonds that connect them, that's where we have our chemical energy. So some examples of things that have chemical energy would be your battery. Plants have chemical energy when they go through the process of photosynthesis, all right, that's where they make their glucose. So there's chemical energy in that glucose. And there's also chemical energy here in food that we eat. All right, the next one we have here is heat energy, all right? And we can also say thermal energy. So here we have a description or a picture of a guy getting heat from um, this heater right here. We also have this person here that's working out. And if you look really, really closely, you can see that this person is sweating. All right, so when he's sweating, he's burning calories. All right, this is uh, thermal energy right here. Let's look at this next one. E, we have E for electrical energy. So this is the energy found in electricity. All right, so we have some examples here. We have some power lines where electricity runs through. We also have an outlet where you can plug in a cord that also has electricity. So anything that you plug into a wall, um, an electric sharpener, your charger, a computer that you plug into the wall, anything like that has electricity. Even other things that you don't plug in have electricity because it runs through them. Here we have the N for nuclear energy. All right, so right here, 
we have a picture of an atom. So again, we talked about atoms when we were discussing elements and compounds and how atoms make up everything around us. So the element of oxygen is made of oxygen atoms, the element of hydrogen is made of hydrogen atoms, and so on. So here we have our example of an atom. The center part of the atom, right here where I'm circling, that part is called the nucleus. So all the energy found right in that center part of this atom, that is known as nuclear energy. All right, the last one we have here is sound energy. So sound comes in the form of waves. We can't see it, but that is sound energy. So I have some examples here. I have a speaker right here, and I have another speaker right here. So when I'm talking right here, you're able to hear me because these sound waves are traveling to you. So that is sound energy. Let's look at an example of, uh, as to how we're going to use these different types of energy because we're doing the transformation of energy. So where does energy start? You know, with what type does it start with? And what does it transform into? What can it turn into after that? And so on, depending on what object we're looking at. So flashlights run on batteries. So if you're not sure, or if you don't remember exactly which type of energy battery has, go ahead, um, pause the video, rewind a little bit, and see if you can find where it is that we have a battery. What energy is found in batteries? All right, so in batteries, we have chemical energy, all right? And I'm using the color orange because that's what I've color-coded it as. So every single battery, now this is very, very important for you to know. Every single battery always starts with chemical energy, and then it transforms into the same type of energy every single time. So the next energy that it transforms into is electrical energy. And again, as you can see, I'm using blue because that's what I've color-coded it as. So now that the chemical energy in the battery has transformed into electrical energy, remember, the electrical energy didn't just create out of nowhere. It transformed from chemical. So now that it did this, now the flashlight has the electricity in it to be able to do what it needs to do. What is the purpose of electricity? What is it, or I'm sorry, of a flashlight, what does it do? What's its purpose? Great job. Its purpose is to create light. So in that case, the electrical energy turns into light energy. That is how we're going to be using energy here. We're looking at the transformation from the first energy that it, the object starts with to the last one it ends with. All right? So thank you guys for watching. We're going to talk more about this obviously in class. We're going to get many different examples in class. But you can always refer back to this video if you want to have a, a different idea or if you just want to review the different types of energy we're going to be looking at and how it is that we're going to be looking at them.